So hey guys, welcome to another night vlog. You guys caught me just at the right time. We're about to uh, head down a fun gradual downhill. We're out here riding at Centennial Park, which is a city park. And uh, riding conditions are really good right now. We don't have tons of snow. I wish we had a little bit more, but uh, trails are nice and packed down. Most of the ice is covered because there's a base of ice underneath all this stuff. We're supposed to get another couple centimeters tonight. Just to be careful because this is getting so packed that. I see some of the uh, ice is being uncovered. Even though we got studded tires, I'm not interested in crashing in the off season when we got big plans to ride lots and get in shape. Get a gradual downhill. This next bit's kind of boring, so I'll see you when we get to some more interesting stuff. Like a year ago, a year and a half ago, I could pretty much be 100% certain I'd be the only fat biker out here. But the sport has grown here in our city pretty fast, and lots of guys have fat bikes now. You come and ride here, you see lots of different tire tracks usually you'd only see surly tires but now you see all the different brands of tires and I mean there's a lot of likelihood we might actually run into another fat biker because conditions are awesome and uh, the cold snap is finally broken it wasn't as cold as last winter but cold enough and going and riding out riding in it like day after day just freaking wears on me so it's finally broke not sure I didn't even check the temperature but it's warmer than minus 10 and I swear it feels like summer I definitely overdressed so I don't know if you can see from this footage but I bought some uh, hand covers some wood blockers not a big fan of full-on pogies. Just looking for that little bit extra on those cold days, especially when it's windy. The gloves I have for cold weather are good, but just to be safe, a little extra protection. So these are from a company called Skins. I think they're based in uh, Minnesota. They're actually made in Minnesota, so they're really easy to put on. Hands fit in them really, really nicely. There's still room to spare. They have like a reflective, heat reflective material on the inside to reflect heat back. And they're, I guess in the sense you could say they're kind of lightly insulated and they're working awesome i'll leave uh the link for them in uh, the info box so you can check them out they are quite expensive but uh they work really well if you are like me and you don't like pogies full-on pogies these are a great compromise so we got a little technical, steep little climb here. Oh, made it. Oh. So it's January, middle of January. It's time to start ramping up my training. 
still going to stick to say a maximum of 14 hours a week I said before that's about the max I can handle mentally but I'll start working in structure and intensity nothing crazy right now just lots of tempo two days a week a tempo and then one day of uh, stuff I guess a little bit harder than tempo some big gear hill climb and uh, try and strengthen my legs I see uh, these are Bud and Nate tracks my brother was out here today it's gonna be surprised if these are uh, his tracks He doesn't have lights. I keep telling him, just invest some money in some lights. I mean, the prices have come down and you can get so much light for not a lot of money compared to what I paid for these things. I mean, these are five, six years old now. They're still enough, especially in the wintertime. They're more than enough. I mean, all three lights combined About around 1500 lumens. So I have two on the handlebar and then one on my head. So this is the Trans Canada Trail. Really steep bridge here. So I also think this is part of a snowmobile trail. But uh, this section here kind of multi-use so you'll occasionally get spooked by a snowmobiler or you'll spook a snowmobiler a lot of foot traffic fat bikers the occasional regular mountain biker trying to ride in the snow okay so and I head into some single track here shortly. Yeah, I did uh, like 30 minutes of tempo last night. Three 10 minute uh, tempo sessions. And yeah, I made my legs a little bit sore. But I could have handled more. So that's a good sign for January. And uh, But today we're kind of avoiding any hard hills or hard efforts because do some more intensity tomorrow I kind of subscribe to the Greg LeMond five days a week Monday Friday off Tuesday intensity Wednesday easier Thursday intensity So this is pretty sweet riding right now. So I think there's a log across the trail here shortly. It's at a bad angle too. Freaking hate crossing it. I used to be a pretty good cross country racer, but I don't actually mountain bike that much anymore. So I've lost a lot of those skills, but they're all relearnable skills. I can hate this log. Bad angle. Bad angle. I guess a little tighter through here. Lots of sticks across the streets and I, across the trail, sorry, I think. Lots of people walk their dogs in here, I swear. The dogs must pick up sticks and then lose interest in them and they just strewn across the trail.
Okay, so now we gotta do some climbing, but hopefully I can just spin my way up this stuff. It's hard packed enough that it shouldn't be too bad. Okay, so here's a steep climb. Try not to get my heart rate over 140. Forty, one forty-one. So we just broke into zone two. Not bad, considering it's pretty steep. So I'm not bad, fitness-wise. Managed to keep a steady stream of hours. Essentially, riding as much, as many hours as I do in the summertime. Just not the same distance because I'm riding a fat bike and on a good day you're averaging 20k an hour. But time and intensity is all that matters to your body. Distance covered is irrelevant. When we get to the next fork in the trail, I have to stop and take a leak. Well hydrated. Okay, stopping to take a leak. No, you can't watch. All right. Back on the road again. So we've been out for 48 minutes. So now we're looping around and start heading back. But we're going to add another little bit of a loop. If I get anywhere between an hour and a half, two hours, I'm happy. This will be a 14 hour week. I'll probably do a 14 hours in six days as opposed to 14 hour in five, which is normally the way I would do it. This is the main trail to the parking lot at this. This is a conservation area we're in now. We're not in Centennial Park. We're now in Cascades Conservation Area. So this is totally hard packed. And I'm just being cautious again because it's a totally ice base underneath and I don't want to slip out. Because this is so packed down, it's not far away from that ice base. All right now this trail this trail is fun nice bit of gradual downhilling except for this first part it's very steep so hard packed here. Last time I did it, I rode it. Let's see. We can do it this time. Yes! Certain fat bikes are not exactly nimble. That's pretty good. Another freaking log that I hate. heading back to the snowmobile trail.
Okay, so it's another loop we're gonna do. So might as well come along. 